وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to another installment from our Ramadan Daily Droplets where we give you a particular point of benefit relating to the month of Ramadan every single night and the benefit that we're going to be talking about this evening inshallah is that Ramadan is the month of At-Tawbah wal istighfar it is the month of repentance and it's the month of asking Allah's forgiveness. And to begin, we have to establish that al-istighfar, seeking the forgiveness of Allah and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to conceal our sins, to cover our sins, to stop the negative consequences of them and to forgive us for them. This istighfar is from the sunan of the prophets, from the sunan of the anbiya, the ways of the prophets alayhim salatu wassalam. In Surah Nuh, Ayah number 28, Allah Azza wa Jal tells us that Nuh said, رَبِّ اغْفِرْ لِي وَلِوَالِدَيَّ وَلِمَنْ دَخَلَ بَيْتِيَ مُؤْمِنًا وَلِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ وَلَا تَزِدِ الظَّالِمِينَ إِلَّا تَبَارًا My Lord, forgive me. رَبِّ اغْفِرْ لِي My Lord, forgive me. Istighfar, asking Allah to, for his forgiveness, asking Allah to forgive him. رَبِّ اغْفِرْ لِي my Lord, forgive me and my parents and whoever enters my house as a believer and forgive the believing men and the believing women. So this is from the Sunan of the Anbiya and likewise from Ibrahim alayhi salam that Allah Azza wa Jal told us that he said, وَالَّذِي أَطْمَعُ أَنْ يَغْفِرَ لِي خَطِيئَةِ يَوْمَ الدِّينِ The one that I wish that he will forgive my sins on the day of resurrection. So here Ibrahim speaks of his hope and his wish that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive him. And this is in Surah Ash-Shu'ara, ayah number 82. This is the Khalil of Allah Azza wa Jal, the, the special and close one of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ibrahim, a prophet from Ulul Azmi min al Rusul, the five most dedicated and most important prophets. And he wishes and hopes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would forgive him. And Dawood alayhi salam, as Allah Azza wa Jal told us, In Surah Sad, ayah number 24, and Dawood came to know, he knew, he realized that we were testing him, so he sought the forgiveness of his Lord and he bowed, he fell down, bowing, prostrating to Allah, and he turned back to him. And the last words of our messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, from the hadith of our mother, Aisha, radiyallahu anha, she said, سَمِعْتُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ يَقُولُ قَبْلَ أَنْ يَمُوتُ وَهُوَ مُسْنِدٌ إِلَى صَدَرِهَا وأصغت إليه وهو يقول اللهم اغفر لي وارحمني وألحقني بالرفيق In some of the narrations وألحقني بالرفيق الأعلى عائشة رضي الله عنها she said I heard the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم just before he passed away and he was resting on her chest he had put his head on her chest رضي الله عنها she heard him say the words, O oh Allah, forgive me and have mercy on me and cause me to join Ar-Rafiq or Ar-Rafiq Al-A'la. And they are the ones that Allah Azza wa said about them. وَمَن يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولَ فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّيقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ وَحَسُنَ أُولَٰئِكَ رَفِيقًا that whoever obeys Allah and his messenger, then they will be along with those that Allah has bestowed his blessings upon from the prophets and the truthful and the martyrs and the righteous. And what an excellent rafiq, 
what an excellent group of companions they are. So the Prophet ﷺ, he asked Allah for his forgiveness and he asked Allah for his mercy and he asked Allah Azza wa Jal to join him with those great companions and those great individuals that Allah Azza wa Jal told us about from those that Allah had bestowed his blessings upon. And Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu narrates, سَمِعْتُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ يَقُولُ وَاللَّهِ إِنِّي لَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ وَأَتُوبُ إِلَيْهِ فِي الْيَوْمِ أَكْثَرَ مِنْ أَكْثَرَ مِنْ سَبَعِينَ مَرَّةِ He said that by Allah, I ask Allah's forgiveness and I repent to Him in a day more than 70 times in the hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari. Subhanallah. Our Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam And you know the, the status of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam And how far he was away from disobeying Allah Azza wa Jal And yet he would ask Allah to forgive him And he would repent to Allah More than 70 times in every single day Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam And how now we want to we wanna bring this into the month of Ramadan specific to the month of Ramadan. So how can we how can we tie this into the month of Ramadan? There is a hadith narrated from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Sa'id al-Nabiyyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al-Minbar The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he climbed onto the Minbar فَقَالَ آمين, آمين, آمين. He said آمين, آمين, آمين. In some of the narrations it's mentioned every step that he went up, he said, Ameen. Then on the next step, he said, Ameen. Then on the next step, he said, Ameen. Qila ya Rasulullah, innaka sa'idta al-minbar. Faqulta Ameen, Ameen, Ameen. He said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, you climbed onto the minbar and you said, Ameen, Ameen, Ameen. Qala atani Jibreel alayhi salatu wa salam. Faqala man adraka shahra ramadhan falam yughfar, falam yughfar lahu fadakhala al-nar فَأَبْعَدَهُ اللَّهُ قُلْ آمِينَ فَقُلْتُ آمين. He said, Jibreel came to me and he said to me, whoever reaches the month of Ramadan and that person is not forgiven in some of the narrations, whoever reaches the month of Ramadan and the month ends and they are not forgiven and they enter the fire, may Allah cast them far away, may Allah make them far away, say Amin. The Prophet ﷺ said, Amin. The one who the month of Ramadan comes and that person is not forgiven. The month of Ramadan comes, all these opportunities for forgiveness in the month of Ramadan, these opportunities for dua, the accepted dua of the person during the day when they are fasting, the time when they pray at night, the extra prayers that the person performs, the extra Quran the person reads, the extra good deeds being multiplied in the month of Ramadan. And this person reaches somebody goes into Ramadan and Ramadan starts and Ramadan ends and they were not forgiven and this is a person who is far away from Allah Azza wa Jal and Jibreel made dua for the for Allah Azza wa Jal to make this person far away and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said Ameen he said Ameen as for the rest of the hadith the one that has two parents or one parent and isn't righteous towards them they are righteous towards them and they die and they enter the fire. May Allah make them far away. And the Prophet said, Ameen. And the last one, whoever the Prophet's name is mentioned, and they don't give a salat upon the Prophet, they don't say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they die and they enter the fire, then may Allah make them far away. And Jibreel said to the Prophet, Qul Ameen, say Ameen. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Fakultu Ameen. I said, Ameen. This month of Ramadan has so many opportunities for forgiveness and that's why the, the Prophet ﷺ put the emphasis on that month of Ramadan, on this month of Ramadan and the fact that a person, how wretched must a person be for this month to start and all the opportunities for forgiveness and they reach the end of the month and they have not been forgiven, that is the person who is really truly shaqi, who is truly wretched. The reality of Tawbah, as Imam Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, فَحَقِيقَةُ التَّوْبَةُ هي الندم على ما سلف منه في الماضي والإقلاع عنه في الحال والعزم على أن لا يعاوده في المستقبل. He said the reality of Tawbah is to feel sorry and for feel to feel regretful over what happened in the past and to 
completely stop and distance himself from doing it in the present and to be determined and have a resolve that he will not go back to it in the future. That's the reality of Tawbah. The reality of Tawbah is as it relates to the past, you feel sorry. As it relates to the present, you stop doing it. And as it relates to the future, you have that dedication and that resolve that you will not go back to it. Does that mean you'll never go back to it? No, you might go back to it because there are a hadith regarding the person who commits a sin and goes back to it. But ultimately, you try every time to make that resolve that you're not going to go back to what you did before. And tawbah, in reality, in that way, it's more complicated and harder than al-istighfar. It's more, it has more elements to it. And in reality, it's something that is necessary. It's a necessary part of your iman. And that's why Allah Azza wa Jal, He told us in the Quran, وَأَنِسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ ثُمَّ تُوبُوا إِلَيْهِ يُمَتِّعْكُمْ مَتَاعًا حَسَنًا إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ مُسَمَّى وَيُؤْتِي كُلَّ ذِي فَضْلٍ فَضْلَهِ وَإِن تَوَلَّوْا فَإِنِّي أَخَافُ عَلَيْكُمْ عَذَابَ يَوْمٍ كَبِيرٍ That Allah Azza wa Jal told us in the Quran and that you seek the forgiveness of your Lord and then you turn to Him in repentance. He will give you mata'an hasana, a temporary enjoyment and provision in this world until a time that has been appointed. And he will give every person of virtue, the virtue that he has chosen to give them or the grace that he has chosen to give them. And if you turn away, then I fear for you the punishment of a great day. And al istighfar is a means to repair the damage that you have done to your fast. And this is a very important point. And that is why it is said from some of the pious predecessors, Al-ghibatu tukharriqu siyam wal-istighfar yuraqqi'u faman istata'a minkum an la ya'tiya bi sawmin mukharraqin fal yaf'al ghiba it rips apart and it tears apart your fast, backbiting, to say about your brother or your sister something which is true, which they would not like. It tears apart, it breaks apart, it pulls apart at the seams. It rips apart your fast. And seeking forgiveness patches it back up. It patches it up. Yuraqi'uhu means to patch it or to like to sew up the, the break or the tear that was there before, to patch it back up. So whoever from among you is able not to bring a fast that has been ripped up into pieces, let him do so. Ripped up into pieces or caused to be ruined also. That's what the word مخرق, it can also mean. It can mean uh, يعني He ruined it. Whoever of you is not is able to bring a fast that hasn't been ruined, let him do so. There are many, many ways that we could inadvertently ruin our fast or damage our fast. And one of the most prominent of them is ghibah, is backbiting. So it's very, very important that we avoid these things that tear apart our fast and ruin our fast. And what patches it up is al-istighfar, is asking Allah's forgiveness. But on the topic of ghibah, it's important to note that when we talk about istighfar, as it relates to ghibah, it is very important that this is, when you make ghibah and you backbite somebody, this is a right of the other person as well as the right of Allah Azza wa Jal that you have infringed. So not only do you have to seek the forgiveness of Allah Azza wa Jal, but you also have to make up the ghibah for the ghibah that you did, like uh, asking the person to forgive you or mentioning them or and mentioning them in good where you mention them in a negative way and making dua for them, giving sadaqah on their behalf and so on to make up for the ghibah that you did. And Muhammad ibn al-Munkadir, the great tabi'i rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, As-sa'im idha ghtaba khuriq wa idha staghthara ruqi' He said, the fasting person, when they commit ghibah, their fast becomes ruined or it becomes torn, it becomes broken. And when they seek forgiveness, it is patched back up. And I'm going to conclude with a really beautiful hadith narrated by Al-Bayhaqi and Shu'ab Al-Iman from our mother Aisha radiallahu anha that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Tawbah, 
لمن وجد في صحيفته استغفارا كثيرا طوبة a tree in paradise or a place in paradise for the person who finds in their scrolls a great deal of istighfar. May Allah Azza wa Jal make us all from the people who make istighfar regularly. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us all for our sins and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our repentance. That's what Allah made easy for me to mention and Allah knows best. Wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyina Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum. If you're enjoying these videos and you'd like to keep up to date with all of the courses we're going to be running, make sure you head over to amauathome.com.